It is common in many recording studios to have multiple sets of monitor speakers to achieve different types of references, from a portable listening experience on a tablet to near field speakers or large soffit mounted monitors. These monitors can work in different surround configurations or be in stereo or mono. To switch between different monitoring setups with your program, often it requires a piece of hardware that sits at the most critical monitoring stage between the digital to analog converter and the monitor speaker. And it's gonna inevitably alter the sound of your signal. The control room in Cubase can use additional outputs on your audio interface and create a software-based monitor controller that can integrate with the project and your computer. Let's take a look at how we can have this set up. We'll go to our devices menu or hit the F4 button and go to the VST connections. We'll select our outputs tab. And when we look at this, we're gonna see our stereo output defined. And while this seems counterintuitive, we actually want to maintain our stereo output, but click on it so that it is not connected. Otherwise, we could run into the possibility of double busing our signal. I'm gonna select the studio tab and right click in a blank spot and add a monitor and we have up to four different monitors. We have our control room visible here and that could be accessed from the control room mixer from devices menu independently or integrated within the mix console when you click on this icon on the right. So let's add our different speakers. So I will right click and we will add and we have up to four different monitor speakers. We could have these be different configurations where it's mono up to 5.1. So let's say I want these to be sent to my Yamaha HS7s. I'll type in the name. And at this point, we can see my HS7 appear directly here on a control room with down mix presets. I want to define what outputs of my audio interface that are being sent directly to my HS7s. And we could do the same thing for other monitors. So let's say I have JBLs. Let's add our third set of speakers. Let's say an Eve. and we'll add our Yamaha NS10. So I could see my four different monitors directly here inside of the control room. Once we have the connections configured, we can close the VST connections window. To switch between the different monitor settings, and where the signal is being sent to, I can click directly here on the name of the monitor. So if I want to go to my Yamaha HS7s, to my NS10s, to my JBLs, back to NS10s, to EVEs, or we could click on the letters here. This would be monitor one, two, three, four. So they're labeled as A, B, C, D. So when we listen to this, we can now see that the signal is gonna be going directly through our Yamaha HS7 monitors. Now, the control room has its own dedicated volume. And this is an important distinction because many people use the master fader in their console as a monitor volume controller. And this actually affects the gain structure of the mix. So if you watch kind of the master fader here as I adjust this down, the gain structure on a mix is altered and affected. The monitor volume here in the control room, as I adjust it, doesn't affect the gain stage of the mix, but rather the monitoring volume solely. So we can have kind of an independent monitoring volume from the master fader.
Now there's some handy keyboard shortcuts to be aware of. So that if you wanted to switch between different sources, we can go to your key commands and let's just go to our control room and we could have different key commands to select different monitors directly or you could actually have it just select the next monitor. Now there's also a dim signal and we could, as we play back, we could dim the control room monitors by a specified amount. And the dim preference for how much is, how many dB the signal will be dimmed down will be found in the preference, select under VST control room, and you can see the main dim volume there. So if you wanted to adjust the dim volume as we do that, you can do that quite easily. When we switch between different speakers, there's a chance that we have different amplifier power and some speakers will be louder or softer than other speakers. There's a good chance for an accurate reference that we'd want to have the same level on all the speakers when we switch. And if we click on the setup tab, as we select our different speakers, we see this volume control. So at this point I could say, okay, this is louder. I could adjust and attenuate or increase the volume for each speaker independently. So you could send like a test tone out and just have a like a hardware, you know, level meter and then be able to just simply switch between the different speakers so that you could have consistent volume levels. So we're going to have not only our dim, but let's say if I wanted to do different down mixes. So if we play this back, I could listen to it in stereo, or I could down mix it to mono. So once again, I could listen to stereo. Or mono. So very easy to do this. And if we have a 5.1 monitor, we could go 5.1 to stereo to mono to check to make sure that the mix is gonna fold down accurately. A lot of people have gotten accustomed to working and monitoring at a very specific known reference monitoring level. So if you always want to have the same exact monitoring level between different projects, you could actually set a reference point. So if this is my known reference level and this is where I always want to go to, at this point you can hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the reference level. So as we play, you could go to that known reference. Sometimes in a long mix session, it's really tempting to just kind of keep raising the volume and that could fight against you in the mix. But at this point, you could just know that your reference level can be recalled so that you know exactly it's going to be consistent throughout the entire mix process. Sometimes people may want to run plugins on particular monitors. In the old days, some people believe that putting a piece of tissue over the tweeters of an NS10 really solved the problems. So if you wanted to select a pair of monitors here, you could actually have up to eight different plugins on a particular source. So if you found one monitor too bright in a room, you could actually at this point just activate an EQ and be able to have plugins that just go directly on the monitor itself. So if you wanted to have the ability to have a software-based monitor control that did down mixing, that allowed you to switch, that allowed you to set up key commands, that allowed dimming, that also allowed you to set up your known reference points and apply processing on individual monitor speakers, you could see that the control room functionality in Cubase is really comprehensive and can save you a lot of money in not having to buy dedicated hardware. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.